Whooping cough in California is now an epidemic, which sounds bad, but what does it mean really? Hey everybody, Trace here for D News. When I hear whooping cough, I think of like the Oregon Trail or picture the hardships of a bygone era, but actually I'm wrong. We're all wrong. It's happening right now. Whooping cough, or pertussis, is also known as the 100 days cough because of the terrible hacking cough it causes, which is usually followed by the person gasping for air. Though it can affect adults, it mainly affects children under the age of 10. This year, California has seen over 3,500 cases and one death as of Monday morning. Now the State Board of Public Health has declared this an epidemic, which means more people are infected than would normally be in an average year. Whooping cough spreads through airborne droplets and can take a couple of weeks to fully incubate in the human body. Once it has a foothold though, it infects the tissues of the lungs, releasing a toxin that keeps them from cleaning themselves. This causes the coughing as we try to clear that debris and then that horrible intake of breath the coughing sprays bacteria into the surrounding atmosphere so that the infection can spread. It can also cause children to become blue in the face from a lack of oxygen while coughing and can even cause brain damage. This is real serious, guys. Before 1940, though, whooping cough reportedly infected about 150 people out of every 100,000, booming every two to five years and then crashing in between. That was, of course, reported cases, so chances are it was actually even higher than that. After 1940, the vaccination was developed and the infection was beaten back to one for every 100,000 by 1970. Pertussis is a pretty strong bacteria, though, requiring more than a single injection to establish and maintain immunity. It's actually five vaccines over six years. But once established, it should work pretty well. Most doctors recommend the vaccine in infants because they're easily infected, and it's often given at the same time as diphtheria and tetanus. So if whooping cough is so easily prevented, why do we have this epidemic now? Why were there over 9,000 cases and 10 deaths in 2010 and 18,000 cases in 2012? More than any year since 1947, by the way. Well, science says we're to blame. The journal Pediatrics published a study that found parents refusing to vaccinate children is one of the factors. According to a separate pediatric study, parents who don't vaccinate are 23 times more likely to have their child let the bacteria get a foothold in their system. 23 times, that's a lot. There are other reasons too though. For example, the bacteria may have mutated to become stronger over the last 70 years, weakening the vaccination's effectiveness. They're looking into that. But in the meantime, we know that there are people refusing vaccinations for non-medical reasons, just flat out turning them down. And according to the US Department of Health and Human Services, if less than 95% of people are vaccinated, the herd immunity effect is kaput. And in 2010, only 91% of kindergartners had their whooping cough vaccines. So maybe we're just seeing what happens when people refuse vaccination. Additionally, the vaccine run must be completed and immunity isn't fully set up until the third injection. And then a booster is required in your teenage and adult years. Not everyone's parents are keeping their kids' shots up to date. So if for some reason vaccines are refused, the bacteria can be treated with antibiotics, but that's a short-term cure. As we've talked about on D News before, eventually bacteria do mutate to fight antibiotics. They can also prescribe steroids, oxygen, and cough suppressants, but in the end, it's still going to be a fight for whoever gets whooping cough. The best thing we can do is vaccinate our infants and kids and keep our records up to date. So how do stories like this make you feel? Share your reactions in the comments and be sure that you subscribe for all of our D News videos seven days a week.